What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Empire Watch Club. Today I brought my good friend Joe. His IG handle is Bialist. And uh, you know, he works in finance, but normally he's actually just collecting watches. And today we're gonna continue with the watch stories theme. And uh, you know, I'm very, very honored and I'm very just ecstatic to have Joe on here because I know that he also runs his own podcast. He is an amazing watch collector, watch connoisseur, and he runs Red Bar Taiwan, which is a watch club. Uh, thank you for having me here. First of all, before I start, I you know, really want to appreciate what Sunny have you, you have done for the watch community in Taiwan. I think you guys create this content uh, that actually brings more uh, people to know, like not just Taiwan, but everyone everywhere else. When we first met with all of the watches, so yeah. you came to our Red Bar Taiwan event. Yep. Um, Red Bar is sort of like international watch club yes. that there's location in different places. Yep. That's how we met, and then now we're here recording videos. And just know? talking watches, yeah. and you know, he brought some of his watches, so you know, let's hear some watch stories. Yes, so let's start with uh, my first watch. Well, actually not first watch, but starting from my military days. I have this Casio, so this is sort of my watch that I wear for a year and a half, the, whole, the entirety of my military career in the army. Uh, because it's a military green, so it goes very well with my army uniform. And uh, it was given by my friend. I think this is where it starts my sort of wearing wristwatch as a habit. And yeah, so I thought this is robust. This wow. is something that you you go along with, you know. Yeah, no, this is this is really cool. This is god tier. <laughs> god tier. <laughs> yeah, god tier. Yeah, yeah, god -tier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Military god tier right here. <laughs> yeah, no, this is so cool though. This was the watch that led you to, to your watch collecting journey, yes. right? Yes, um, in terms of wearing watches habit, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, I make a little bit more money and I also went from engineer to sort of financial industry. So then I start wearing suits. And then mm -hmm. I don't know what to wear. I'm like, who do I copy? Who do I, who do I follow? Like, at the time, I feel like Tom Ford was the one, right? Okay. So I was like, hey, what's Tom Ford wearing? with his suit and then and I realized he's a big fan of Cartier yeah he's a big fan of Cartier he loves Cartier watches I think so that's the reason also the reason I got this Cartier tank solo XL this got this uh, sapphire on the side it actually can be hidden under your cuff so you can recognize it by just the sapphire on the side it was an entry Cartier but it was something that I got into the luxury mechanical automatic watches yeah no this is such a classic yeah it's uh, something that's recognizable but it yeah. suits pretty much every occasion but it's classy yeah the reason I brought this watch today as well like you wouldn't I wouldn't have met Sunny I wouldn't have uh, create this international watch club called Red Bar Taiwan. I also wouldn't have a watch podcast today. Yeah. yeah. So I'm guessing after this, you started to get into more other watches then? Yes. I bought this watch following uh, after Ooh. after the, this after is the an, Cartier tank. Yeah, this is another very iconic watch. Yes. This is uh, Jeju Le Cool, if I say it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's an ultra thing, I think 1931. So when I was hunting this watch, JLC, when they brought this watch to Taipei, they actually showed the vintage, the original, the very first JLC okay. from 1931. Yep. Looks exactly like this. Yeah. When I saw that and, and the sort of like museum piece, I was like, okay, that's the one I want. If I can afford it, the vintage one, but if I cannot afford it, I'll buy a reissue one. Okay. So I think that that's an industry trend as well. I think originals are great, but then I think it really depends on the condition. Right, so yeah. when you're hunting for these, I think you really got to know your vintage stuff. But just like you said, sometimes the originals are so expensive. Yes. And with the 1931, I'm sure the price, at, even at auctions, it's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah, so I mean, but this one is just so elegant. Not a lot of people know, the first watch that I bought my father uh, was a Reverso. Oh, really? Yeah, it was uh, maybe about seven, eight years ago uh, in Shanghai, actually. I hope you still have it, Dad. <laughs> I think that actually kind of foray into another sort of iconic watch. I have to talk about this. This is the pinnacle watchmaking, uh, mechanical high beats. Uh, this is Grand Seiko yep. VFA. VFA stands for very finely adjust or very fucking accurate. <laughs> very, very, fucking accurate. Very, accurate. <laughs> very fucking accurate. Yeah, that's very yeah. EWC right there. Yeah, yeah. Very, <laughs> it was released in 1970s. Okay. 
and the goal of their goal is to beat Swiss. The Japanese yeah. want to beat yeah. Swiss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which they have achieved、um, because this watch accuracy is one second per one day. One second,、yeah. one second per day. So over the course of a year, one month will be one minute per day. One minute accuracy per month per month, and one year will be like twelve minutes only. So that actually have well beaten the Swiss over and over, right? In terms of high beat mechanical watches. After they release this,、uh, I think Swiss watch surrenders. So you you can look at the indices, right? Oh yeah. It's three D. Yeah. It's three D indices.、Depth. So it's short handed, hour hand, minute hand, but the, the, because the hour the indices, indices are three D,、yeah, it's like a little wall. It's, yes, yes. It's very interesting. Yes, yeah. But it's very fucking accurate. It's very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> still today, to this day, I would say this is pinnacle because I think 2019, 18, they create a VFA version, a modern one in 2018, 19, and they still call it VFA, and the accuracy is still the same. They couldn't improve anymore, even to this day. But this was released in the 1970s. Yeah, no, this is an awesome piece. This is really, really cool. I think design is very edgy. I never really got into Grand Seikos, but I know that there are hordes of people, die-hard GS fans, and I understand why. You know, but yeah, Grand Seiko, one of the best. And then the next watch I want to talk about is sort of Jero Genta design watch. But I know Sunny,、uh, you are wearing a Georgina design watch. Ah, yes. So,、um, why did you talk about it for us? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Good point. Georgina, I think everyone knows one of my favorite designers.、Uh, recently, I've been getting into the Octo Finissimo, and、uh, today I'm wearing a Arabic dial. It's the Middle East edition titanium. It's got Arabic numbers. It's a gray dial with military green or、uh, kind of like a British racing green. Uh, yeah. Arabic numerals. It's very cool. It's very lightweight. Yeah, you check it out. Wow, I love the Arabic nu- numerals. This is really cool. It's a perfect cover for 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 like、yeah. his tattoo transition, right? It's it's just like it's skin mechanical and then tattoos style. You know, that's that's kind of like my style, style now, yeah. guys. Yeah, but Joe, take it away and、uh, okay. what about yeah, your so, Joe Gentle、uh, watch? Yeah,、so、this must be a special one. The AP came out with Royal Oak, right? Yeah, it came out with Royal Oak. Uh, because they cannot be the Japanese in terms of accuracy. I think, I think the time, the time wristwatch is still sort of a working man's watch. It's still like you、yes. need to keep track of time. Yes. And what do you use? Use for watches. So in Japanese, it will beat them in accuracy. So that's why it's called so-called quartz crisis, right? Yeah. Everyone was ditching everything else for the quartz. Yeah. So it's because quartz is so accurate. So what Royal Oak brings to the market is that they actually turn the mindset. Hmm. They they create a stainless steel watch that's more expensive than gold. Yeah. Right.、And、Sounds it, crazy, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, well, the stainless steel is cheap, but why would you make a watch more expensive than the gold? Yeah. Right. So what they did was they changed the mindset. You don't look at watches as a, just tool anymore. Okay. You 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 look at watch as luxury item. Yeah. That's on your wrist. That says that says something about you. Yeah. But this world of is just not a regular world. This is one、oh. of the first one they use by metal,、mm-hmm. so it's tantalum and stainless steel together. So you can see different shade of steel here, as well as this watch is meaningful to me because at the time it was sort of darkest hour of my life. At the time,、oh. my mom has passed away, and、um, this Royal Oak was one of the first watch I was hunting for. Oh, I've been looking for this particular piece for a long time.、Mm. It's called AP Championship by its nickname. Because、okay. some golfer won the championship in 1990 U.S. Open, and they created this watch for him. Golf represents my dad in a way because he he loved golfing. He still、okay. golfs to this day. And、um, and so what happened was,、um, it's, it it feel it almost feel like this became available、uh, after my mom's funeral. At the time when I got this watch, after my mom's funeral, it's almost like my mom telling me, "Hey son, I found this watch for you. Go ahead and pick it up." But you know, because these also represent golf, please take care of your dad for me. Yeah, so,、uh, so when I think of this watch, I think of my mom. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. I'm I'm sorry to hear about you know that.、Uh, it's okay. Yeah, but it's very meaningful, and、uh, thank you so much for sharing. And that's what these special watches are really about. They become a part of your life. They become your memory. They become your history. Mm. Right. This is definitely a super meaningful watch, and I'm super happy that you were able to share this with us. That actually is a good segue to talk about my dad. 
Okay, you, you, this is this is typical. I always say typical, but this is a watch that my dad gave to me. I, I think this is kind of watch that. <laughs> this is the Taiwan OG yes. gangster watch. I'm sure your dad was an OG, yeah. like an OG yeah. OG. All right, yeah. like especially with the presidential and yeah. uh, it with a diamond indices as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. It, it brings a smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's um, it's a watch that when you buy, when you, yeah. you feel like you made it back in back in the day, then you feel like it's time for me to get this very very watch. Yeah, this is dope. Yeah. <laughs> this is really dope. Yeah. So I think that actually represents my family. The other thing is I want to represent is sort of my goal. So I also talk about my military days. Now I kind of move out of Taipei, and uh, I want to talk about this watch, this Xiaomi Jump Hour. So. This is Xiaomi, uh, which they don't use. They don't usually make watches. They are not famous for making watches. Okay. But when I saw it on Instagram, I'm like, okay, I need to get that watch because it has that independent watch, deeper tone vibe and MBF yeah. vibe as well yeah. to it. It's so simple, yet so wild. I can't even put words to this, but this is something that I saw on your IG yeah. that really caught my attention. So please tell me, tell me more about this. Sure, sure, sure. So um, yeah, when I when I wanted to hunt it down, like when I see the watch on IG, I was like, okay, I must find one. And because Xiaomi doesn't really make watches, it's so rare. And then I found this on eBay. Okay, okay. Oh. we're all over it's on eBay. eBay. Oh, right. What's so special about it? What story can you make up yeah. with Joe, right? But what makes it more interesting is that the eBay sellers in Taipei. What? Yeah, exactly, right? And. What's even cooler is when I was buying a watch, he finally sent me his address. He was like 200 meters from where I live. No way. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's, Dude, it's that is crazy. Where I live. So I was like, wow, this is this is incredible. This is like it meant to be mine and it's so easy. I issued you bike later to pick <laughs> it up. <laughs> but also what makes it cool is like sort of my time in Taipei. Um, yeah. I used to live in Taipei for 10 years plus and now I move out of Taipei. So there's something when I think of it, I think of Taipei. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, that, that's awesome. It just shows um, how we in Taipei or in Taiwan have really cool watch collectors. I love it. But yeah, thank you for sharing this story. Hey, yeah. eBay and Taipei. eBay Who and knew? Taipei. Who, Who knew? knew? And going off the watch, uh, digital watch theme and the uh, jump out theme, yeah. I think most people know me uh, by this watch in the moment. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the uh, the Biaoist. Yeah. You know, quote unquote, this is what everyone has gravitated towards your IG and your social media and probably your podcast to know this has become Joe's watch. Yeah, this is uh, Lange and Zone Zeibwerk, if I say it correctly, in Germany. In German, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, yeah, the Zeibwerk, the OG Zeibwerk. The reason it represents me, uh, let me explain real quick. So I mentioned earlier, I was in engineering before. I think we, as a millennial, uh, is really lucky. We're able to be living in this world where it used to be analog. Mm -hmm. The film camera, there was Sony Walkman, yeah. there was VHS tape, yep. you know, not Netflix, no Spotify. Nothing. But yeah, so what makes this so cool, it represents me because um, I'm in the digital space and as well as a former engineer, I think that intuitive design and body language is so easy. Like you can see, okay, well that's that's A58 right now. Even as you cover the hour, you can say, oh, that's mini 58. Yeah. So easy, nothing complicated. Why does it cost so much money, right? But if you turn it back, there's a big party in the back. Where yeah, it's, it's crazy it's, in yeah, the back. Yeah, it's crazy in the back, yeah. right? And it's all hand finish. Um, it, it won award for like horology award back in 2009. Yeah, it was one of the watch was Oscar. Like so, you won the GPHG. So you won that title, and uh, because it's so difficult, it exerts so much power. And this is actually the watch that speaks with you, engage with you every minute, mm -hmm. because you can hear the sound click like every minute, like by by the fifty nine second, and when you turn sixty, and it turns that disc, and you will hear it, tap, yeah, tap. So he actually talks to me every day, every minute, he, he does. And, uh, and I find it so, so fascinating. Uh, right now it's 8.59. We can wait till it turns uh, both hours a minute disc. Yo, I heard that. Did you hear that? I you heard, heard that. that. Yeah, you hear that. Like you hear that. Yeah. yeah. And I put it on a rubber strap because I, I think I feel rubber strap is so comfortable. Um, I think no one else does it on a rubber strap as well. So he says a lot about me because my work, myself, my mindset, and how when we used to program softwares, you know. For us right now, the iPad looks so easy, but actually all the coding in the back, 
it's so sophisticated. It feels like same thing. Like the, the dial is so easy to read, but in the back you'll be like, wow, this is takes an effort to make. There's just something so unique about this watch. It seems so simple, but it's yet so complicated. And it's heavy. Mm. And I think you made a great choice with the rubber strap because it's kind of like a contrast yes. of style in there. But it, that also represents you as a person. So that's why I said everyone knows this watch as kind of like the like Joe's watch now. And I must say, this is truly special. Longe, you guys knocked it out the park with this one, man. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But I also want to talk about one last piece I brought. When you invite me and say, okay, well, we want to talk about watch stories. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, what's the most story watch I have? I have seen a lot, a lot okay. of different stories. Okay. But this may not be a good story. This could be a horror story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I, I so, kind of, uh, I can see what you mean. It could mean be a now. horror story. Right? It's gone through a lot. It, it's been through a lot. So this is a Japanese uh, Imperial Army watch uh, back in the 1940s or 1930s. Okay. Uh, made Probably Seiko. World War II. Yeah, World War II was. Yes. So they, it was issued to the military officers in Japan, Imperial officers. Uh, the reason I know that because it has a star underneath the 12 o'clock sign, right? So they are different ones. So in Army is star sign. Um, they are cherry blossom for Air Force. If there's a anchor icon, it would be for Navy. So this one is an uh, Army for officers watch. And because back in the 30s, 40s, the waterproof was not super great. So it's actually double cased. So there's two layer of casing here. So yeah, I think Seiko was called Seiko Sha back then. You can see clearly see the yeah, Seiko, the Seiko. On, the, on there. So it's probably one of the most story watch I own in my collection because it sings a lot of probably horror stories. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's still here today. So <laughs> it's, uh, it survived. And uh, this is pretty amazing. I mean, thank you so much for, for sharing all of these watches. Uh, I wish we could have seen more but maybe we yeah. can do that next, next time, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or we can talk about it on your podcast For or, sure. uh, you know, if you guys want to see EWC and uh, Joe Biaoist with Red Bar do a collab, uh, let us know in the comments and, and let us know what, you know, your favorite watch is right here in his collection because it's really difficult for me to pick one. And I like the fact that these are so eclectic, so different from the typical watch collection. And this is what I love seeing about watch collectors. And this is what I wanted to share with you all. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys very soon. Peace. Peace.